Hello everyone, today is the first episode of first season of Multiphysics channel, which is about event interface, which I believe it's an easy solution for heart problems. I am Flora Bahrami, your host today. My background is on chemical and biomedical engineering. I'm at my second year of PhD. I work on transport phenomena in human body related to healthcare. I am famous to be an early bird. My interests are physics-based simulation, statistical modeling, and mass transfer. Today, I want to talk about event interface. We have two types of events. First one is explicit event. In a way, you have a value for your parameter and you want to change this value after a certain point in time. So you know exactly when you want, change, you want to change the value. Then after this point, you change the value. Another event is implicit event. You want to change your value after a certain point, after reaching a condition, but you don't know when it happened. But you, the only thing that you know, you want to this situation happens, then you change the, your parameter. Something that you need to keep in mind for implicit events, your condition needs to be modified to be based on zero, which in the following slide, I show you what does, what does it mean, but it, it's an important factor here. So how event interface can help you? You can change the uh, value for your parameters. You can change your boundary condition, which is really easily can be done by events, which I don't know, or if there's other way, it wouldn't be that simple. You can change the involved physics in your system, and also you can change your domain. So let's talk about explicit events. It has two parts, discrete states and explicit events. In discrete state, you put your initial uh, value for your parameter before anything happens, before you reach your point in time to change your values, you put the value you wanted to start with. Then you have your explicit events, which you define here, after what point in time, till when. Here I put infinity, but you can change it, for example, to 10 seconds. Then put your value that you want. If here you make it limit, for example, five to 10 seconds, after 10 seconds, uh, the value for this parameter reached to its initial case. So let's go to console. As you see here, we choose the domain that we want. I put a two domain, I have two domain here with two physics in my model. I choose these two. This is this, this case state which I said to you. It's the initial value. Then I put my explicit events here. And I can, as I said, I can change it to other values. An important issue that you need to keep in mind here, if I change the value to a time-dependent value, for example, multiplied by t, the value would be freeze at this point that the, the events happen. For example, in this case, the value for p1 would be 2.5. Uh, by going into time, the value for p1 wouldn't be changed. It, it just happened once when these events happen. The other type of events, which I said, it's implicit. The first part, this state state is similar, but here we have indicator state, the, the part which we define our condition to be changed. If you remember, I said you need to modify your condition to be based on zero. Here, my condition is when PV1, which is a parameter, reach the value two, something's happened. But as I said, I need to modify it to be based on zero. So I defined another parameter, a help parameter, that it's my main parameter minus two, that it then I can apply it like this one. I can say, okay, when C1 is bigger or smaller than zero, something happened. And this is the value that I is implicit event. Again, I choose my domain. This is the initial value that I want for my model. This is the state, the indicator state, and the condition and the new value that I want for my parameter. Another aspect of events that really can help you, as I said, if you have a time-dependent value, 
that you want to be changed by time, you cannot define it here as it, it feels at the time that the event changes. So you can easily use, uh, use a trick uh, to solve your problem. For example, you want to have a parameter that is a function of at till a certain point of time. It's a function of the u1, the parameter, uh, the variable that is defined by dumb and bind. And at a certain point, it would be uh, based on u2, a, a variable from this sum. So you can use, a, I just put a function, just it can be any function of u1. And after the set, but as I said, it's a function of u2. So you can define two coefficient here, which the value of coefficient one, it's at the beginning one, and after a point, it would be changed to zero. Again, a2 is zero, and after a certain point, it would be one. So it's you, like you switch your physics, you switch your domain, but uh, easily with even interface. Okay, let's get back here. So highlight stuff today is we talk about explicit events, implicit events, and how we can change parameters and condition by even as I, I, I want to focus highlighted more that we can change function condition, which it could be really important and hard to apply without using events. Uh, I want to mention that we have a uh, workshop on simulating and sensing on December 16th. Yeah, here is the flyer. And also, we invite you to join us for a second or third episode of a Multiphysics channel if you work with console and sees uh, that you think you can share your knowledge with us. Uh, you can send an email to Donato Rubinetti, which is in charge for Multiphysics channels. And thank you so much for your attention.